Hi everyone and welcome to this video where we cover how to estimate value at risk or VAR which is one of the most important risk measures in financial markets and can be interpreted as a minimum loss that would be expected to occur over a given period of time. It can be measured either in currency units or percentage terms. And there are three commonly used methods for estimating VAR. First, the parametric or variance covariance method, the historical method, and the Monte Carlo method. Today, we'll focus on the parametric or variance covariance method, which estimates VAR based on the expected return and standard deviation of returns. This method works well when one is confident that the normal distribution can be applied. It's less useful when applied to an investment portfolio containing options, as this leads to non-normal distributions. In our example portfolio, we have two stocks, A and B, with 70% invested in A and the remainder in B, and a total amount invested in our portfolio of £100,000. The first step is to identify the input assumptions for the VAR estimation. For example, we may estimate these parameters using historical data. In our case, we have the annualised return and standard deviation figures for both stocks, as well as their correlation. We assume that we invest £100,000 in our portfolio and we want to estimate the VAR at a 95% confidence level, in other words, a 5% VAR. To do this, we can use this formula here. As shown, we need the expected return of the portfolio as a whole, the Z-score, and the standard deviation of the portfolio as a whole. We want to calculate both the daily and annual 5% parametric VAR. Firstly, the annual expected return and standard deviation. And here we can use the formulae to the right. For the expected return, we take the weight in stock A and multiply this by its annualized return, plus the weight in stock B and multiply this by its annualized return. Therefore, the annual expected return is 0.11. For the portfolio standard deviation, we can use this formula here. We take the weight in A squared and multiply this by the standard deviation of A squared. We then take the weight in B squared and multiply this by the standard deviation of B squared. And then we add 2 times the weight in A times the weight in B times the standard deviation of A and the standard deviation of B. And then finally multiply this by the correlation. Finally, we want to find the square root of this. Next, let's extract the daily expected return and standard deviation in order to be able to calculate the one-day VAR. The expected return is adjusted by dividing by 250 trading days. Since the variance would be adjusted by just dividing by 250 trading days, the standard deviation is adjusted by dividing by the square root of 250. The z-score can be retrieved as follows. This is the z-score for a 95% one-sided confidence interval. Therefore, a 5% VAR is the point on the distribution that lies 1.64 standard deviations to the left of the mean. Next, we can calculate the VAR expressed in percentage format first. This is the absolute value of the expected return minus the z-score, and here we're going to add absolute references, multiplied by the standard deviation. 
To express it in currency terms, we simply multiply it by the amount invested. And once again, we want to make this static, so we add absolute references. To get the daily figures, we can simply use the daily expected return and standard deviation instead. So let's drag this formula across. So this can be interpreted as follows. On 5% of trading days, losses would be at least £1,947. Meanwhile, the annual 5% parametric value is 20,962. The percentage expresses VAR as a percentage of the value of the portfolio. So that's how you can estimate VAR using the parametric method in Excel. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for future Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.